What's up everybody, I'm Carl Fisher. Welcome to Make It Custom. In this video, I'm gonna show you the steps that I take and the tools I use to make these brass knuckle shifter handles. We're gonna use grinders, files, the bandsaw, drills, any tools at your disposal so that you can shape metal into something cool. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you never miss one of our weekly videos. Let's get into it. These brass knuckles, I'm gonna use three inch wide by three eighths thick solid brass flat bar. It's just enough to get that shape. It's gotta be wide enough to go from the palm of my hand to the outside of my knuckles. So three inches is enough. This is the dullest razor blade ever. This other piece of metal is a one inch thick solid aluminum round bar. This is gonna be the adapter that uh, connects the shifter handle to the shifter knob to the knuckles. Shifter knuckles. So I'm gonna machine this so that it accepts whatever the shifter handle is gonna be, usually 3 8 hole or, or 3 8 threaded hole, uh, and then machine it a little bit and countersink a couple of bolts that actually bolt this to the brass knuckles. Obviously the 3 8 thick brass is not gonna be Incredible for an actual shifter handle because that's as thick as what a shifter handle is going to be anyway. So we're going to start laying it out. Here we go. So I'm mostly happy with uh, what I came up with for this design. The only thing that uh, I don't like anymore, I've sort of thought about it, these little spiky things, that's just not me. I think it'll look sweeter if we just do a nice rounded edge. So I'm going to fix that up then cut it out and transfer it to our brass plate. Okay. Oh, there it is. Doesn't look like much right now. Looks like a piece of scrap paper, but this thing's gonna be sick, sick, sick. Okay, so now, uh oh, my brass ain't big enough. Extended this a little bit too far. Now it doesn't even fit on my brass here. So I'm just gonna trim it a little bit. I think it still looks cool. I'm just gonna have to reshape this. Yeah, that actually kind of looks better for some reason. I don't know. Hopefully it fits. Very, very close. Trim a little more. It's kind of good making it a little bit smaller because brass is pretty heavy. And if you're putting it on an automatic shifter, you know, it's one of those long rod style ones in a cool old car. You don't want it jerking around and having so much weight that you go over train tracks and then suddenly you're in reverse. So that's also why I like drilling a bunch of holes in it. Not only does it look cool, lightens it up, still a nice brass piece, but light enough where it's not, uh, not too heavy for your shifter. There we go, we made it. We just made it. Okay. This, if you don't have one, this is an automatic center punch. If you don't know what that is, check it out because these things are amazing. You don't have to fumble around with two hands holding the punch and using a hammer, spring-loaded, and for soft metals like this or aluminum, they make good quality ones that, uh, that make nice marks in steel too, but especially on brass, copper, aluminum, these things are great. One hit and it makes a nice, accurate center punch. So I'm gonna center punch all these holes first. I'm gonna take note as to what size each drill bit is. I'm gonna drill everything, like right now when it doesn't have any shape on the outside, it's really easy to clamp into a vise. Do all your holes first. Shape it afterwards. If one of your holes is a little bit off and you already made the outside shape, well, it's gonna look off. But if your one of your holes is a little bit off, 
and you haven't made the outside shape, you can make sure that that shape follows the hole and it kind of just gives you a second chance, you know, if you need it. Okay, now what size are all these holes? I'm gonna mark them down on my template here. These are 15 sixteenths. These are seven eighths. These are, got three eighths. Okay, I'll let you in another little plan. I'm gonna make two of these. One of them, I'm gonna give away to one of you subscribers in the first month that this video airs, hit notifications so that every week you can see what we're making. I feel like it helps to go over them with a little bit heavier punch sometimes. Just to be sure, this stuff ain't cheap. I don't wanna have to mess one up. Because the drill bit skipped out of the hole. What I like to do when I'm drilling holes like this, I've got a ton of holes to drill, is I like to drill with the smallest one first. Our smallest holes on these are the 5 16 holes. There's one there. Actually, I'm gonna pilot everything with a 1 8 drill bit. These two machine screw holes that will attach to our adapter that's threaded for the shifter handle, those will be the smallest ones. So I'm gonna pilot those with 1 8 pilot everything with 1 8 Next one's 5 16 do that one. I might do 5 16 on the, on the rest of it, then there's 3 8 then it jumps to 7 16 there's a couple of those, then 5 8 there's a couple of those, 7 8 15 16 and then they'll, we'll be done. So, least amount of drill bit changes, and uh, it's nice to step yourself up. The more meat you take off, the more possible possibilities there are for, for chatter with your drill bit. That's why I like to step them and do it like that. It's efficient. Okay, so I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna do this, but I gotta make these slots like that. It's not the easiest thing to do, but we're gonna give it a shot. Now that we got these things knocked out, we got the uh, little pieces drilled. You can see, tried to get as much as I could, which is drilling around that shape. The rest I'm gonna do with a file. Obviously you don't need a milling machine. You can just use a regular drill press. I'd recommend a drill press, not just a hand drill for something like this. Brass sort of bites kind of hard. So you wanna slowly press down on your drill bit so it doesn't just bite right in. If you look up on Google, there's ways to, to change your drill bits so that they cut brass easier. But I find that if you just take your time, you don't have to mess up your drill bits. The next tool I'm gonna use on this, is called a die filer. It's this little machine right here. It just files up and down. You know, it does the work for you. Obviously you guys can just use a file. Whatever you got, just use it because you can do whatever you need with just hand tools. So I'm gonna start with this half round file. It's got a slight round on one side, flat on the other side. That's gonna get both those rounded edges. I'm gonna use the flat side for obviously going like around this way and the round side doing the same. What's cool about this machine is that you can actually put the file through a hole. You don't have to just bring, you know, your piece to the outside of the file that's already there. You can actually stick it right through so you can file the inside of something. Kind of neat.
All right, these things just came off the die filer. We did this cool shape in here. Like I said before, a half round file will do you just fine in a vise. Since I got that needle machine, that's what it's for. Check that out. Nice filed, rounded surface. So yeah, there we go. Next step, I'm just gonna take the burrs off of it. I'm gonna remark with the Sharpie, the outline, and then start cutting out the edges. Get the profile of the outside, round the spots where your fingers go, round the, the edges of everything and make it really nice and smooth. I don't want any square edges on it. I want it to look more finished. So that's next. All right, so these things just came off of the bandsaw. I carved them as close as I could. They're all super choppy and have sharp edges, but removed all the material that I wanted to before it goes onto the die filer. I'm just gonna choose some different files to get into the corners. I'll probably use like a triangle file, something like that, to get right into these spots. And just an assortment of like rounded ones, flat ones. Here we go. Well, I missed all the footage of me doing these, but <laughs> I caught it right at the end. Anyway, die filer, got into all these spots really nice. Different uh, radius files make it, uh, make it nice and easy. So, got the nice points in there. It's starting to look like shifter, brass knuckles, shifter. All right, here comes the fun part that takes forever. We're gonna do uh, a bit of die grinding, give it a little bit of shape grind a little bit away around and, and kind of round out all the points before we uh, sand and polish. Well, that's all I got for you today. 
on the brass knuckle shifter handle build. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys found some value in this video, make sure to spread the word, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And everybody have a good one. We'll see you next time.